Hey everyone, it's Holmes from Homey Storybooks and I'm here again to bring you another TBR. I know I just uploaded the Getting Graphic TBR, but like, fewer things excite me more than looking at a pile of books. This readathon was started by Simon from Savage Reads and the goal is to read big books over a weekend because you don't normally carry them with you on your commute like you might do with other books. Unfortunately, the books I have for this TBR will be similar to other TBRs I've done for Cozy Reading Night and the Dewey's 24 Hour Readathon, but hey, it's cool, they're just taking me a while, no shame. The first is The Secret History by Donna Tartt, it's about some college students who do some seriously nefarious things and hide all sorts of secrets from themselves and from each other. I want to finish this, you guys. I'm up to the last chapter and the last chapter is so long, but I'm gonna do it. It's going to happen because the stakes are getting higher and higher and higher. The next book is one I've talked about so much and every time I do someone puts it on their TBR and that makes me happy and like an evil mastermind kind of way. It is The Well of Luminous by Radcliffe Hall. It's about a young woman called Stephen Gordon who becomes a writer on the eve of the First World War. It's queer, there's gay characters, and Stephen's living in gay Paris now, and she's about to go to the war front and become an ambulance driver. I want there to be a romance. I want there to be like feverish 20th century kissing. I want there to be a happy ending, even though it has the saddest title in the world. And I also kind of maybe want to finish it this weekend too. Can you imagine how I'd feel if I finished two big books in one weekend? Oh my god, amazing. The next book I want to read is probably one of the biggest books on my TBR right now, and that is The Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe. It is 875 pages, and I read the first chapter, and it was lots of pretty environment description and not much else. I know it's going to get interesting, but will it improve on page 75 or page 175? That is the question. There's probably lots of feverish kissing in this one, but it's the kind of feverish kissing that will give you like curses and vampirism and stuff. I feel like this is going to be one of those books where I review it and I'm like, it was amazing because of confirmation bias and because I spent so many hours reading it. This next set of books is inspired by Asian Pacific Heritage Month in the US, which takes place in May. I live in Canada and I'm from Australia, but I'll take any excuse to read some cool books. The next book on my TBR technically isn't a big book, but it's big for the books I have out from the library right now and it is China Rich Girlfriend by Kevin Kwan. This is the second in a trilogy of Crazy Rich Asians, also a film coming out in August of this year that I'm very much looking forward to. When I initially read the first book, I was so done with all of the characters that I really didn't appreciate it. But now that I've had some time away from it, I miss what I love most about Kevin Kwan's writing. It's funny, there's a cultural diaspora in his books. People speak English and Cantonese and Mandarin and some Singaporean English and then some Malay all in the same sentence. And the food. He writes about food in a way that makes me hungry. Satay and lo mein and laksa and there's no easier way to make me fall in love with a book than to talk about the food. The author includes so many details in his books. He'll talk about the Savile Row in London where everyone gets their suits tailored and then he'll go on to describe the suit and the type of fabric and a well-worn table or something. And it sounds so tedious but it, but it allows me to so much better imagine his world and just immerse myself in it. The first page of this book starts with like a Ferrari crashing through a shop window and a man getting annoyed that the plane he's boarding doesn't have cabins in first class. It's great. The other book I'll be starting and buddy reading with Erin from The Bibliotherapist is Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Tian. This is a family saga about a family in Vancouver who invite a young Chinese woman into their home, who fled China after the massacre in Tiananmen Square. I borrowed this from the library when it was really popular and then didn't read it because I was too intimidated. But there's something about buddy reads that make me game for anything. The last book I want to read is Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. This is another family saga about a young Korean woman who falls pregnant to someone who can't marry her. She's then married off to a preacher who takes her to Japan. It follows generations of women through conflict and peace and people discovering their identities. It's a big book that's not afraid to go big. Initially, I was in love with this book. It was so good and so readable and I just ate it up. And then it had to go back to the library, so I returned it. 
I purchased it cheaply on my Kindle and was like, yeah, I'll totally read it. And then I picked it up again, and I really wasn't feeling it so much. I didn't know why, but now I'm scared to read it. But so many people loved it and rated it so highly, and I trust those people a lot, so I'm having a bit of a crisis here. But it's fine. It's fine. This is fine. Are you taking part in the Big Book Weekender? If not, fear not, my dear friends. This is only one of three Big Book Weekends. The other two are from the 24th of May until the 26th, and then the 25th of June until the 27th of June. What's your favourite big book of all time? Mine's probably Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. Such a great book. That's it, that's all for this video, and thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone! Bye.